August 5th, uh, Thursday. Just about uh, uh, about five o'clock in the evening, so it's about uh, 1,500 hours, and uh, we're off at my parents' house. continually after one set of sort of myths die uh, new myths take their place and the myths don't end it just simply it shifts from point to point so one has to ask the question when you do have these myths uh, at what point do you believe everything and most well again this is typically students don't know how to dig past what their professors are telling them. And it's not about being rude in terms of doing analysis. Not, you're not questioning these people in terms of interrogation. It's more of an issue of, uh, well, how do you know what you know? We know what we're, you're telling me this information. You're expecting me to know it on the test, but how do you know that it's true? See, now we're in a situation where anything and everything should be questioned. And then you can't take anything at face value. head on in the middle of the lane. So, 
Anyways. See, I don't know, I guess. I guess this is Lyle LeBlanc's way of doing things. He only talks about his, his particular circle. He does go into other things, but his examples are, and this is what I was talking about before, because there are a number of what they call quote-unquote conspiracy theorists up there. And I think is even those who don't consider themselves to be conspiracy theorists, like your doctors and lawyers and stuff like that, are still pretty much conspiracy theorists. It depends on the level of research and the amount of time you spend on your research. If it's a weekend hobby, you're not, if it's not your main job, then you are more likely not within the sphere of the uh, When you're a researcher and it's your main job that you do on a regular basis, uh, then you are a researcher, you're not a conspiracy theorist. It's a different, different uh, sort of perspective. And what they don't realize is there's a depth. It's not necessarily what you see that matters in some cases. It's what you don't see. There's a lot of times where there, there are issues that I sort of come up on. And it wasn't necessarily so much that uh, I observed something, but it was the things that I didn't observe. And so when the new information came into its place, There was a new understanding, it was an understanding that I didn't have before. And this is sort of where, where you've got to sort of think about things a little bit. Is that sometimes there are things you don't understand, not because you're stupid, but because you just simply haven't considered the information uh, that could have been there. Uh, but, it's, you know, it's just, you can, sometimes you have to look at things two, three times over before you really get a sense for what's going on. So it, it does take, that's what it takes. You know, research, the observational part of the research will take you a couple months. And I guess it's, it's, a, it's not a fast ride. It's not something you do very quickly or, you know, so on and so forth. It's something that is... Uh, I call it a slow ride. It's like a, uh, it's, again, this, if this uh, reference will be lost on uh, most of the younger generation. There are cars known as low riders. And the low riders, the way they were constructed, they have hydraulic uh, suspension systems. And the saying was, the lower you ride, the slower the glide. In other words, this wasn't about fast, this was about cruising. And cruising isn't about speed. Cruising is just that, it, it is the leisurely ride. Uh, and you sort of say, it's not really a ride, but rather a glide. Because that's the, the, the uh, lower the ride, the slower the glide. So it wasn't really that you're, you're sort of traveling very quickly. As a matter of fact, the opposite is quite true. They are sort of moving at parade speed. Uh, and this is the way research is. Research is long and slow. There are some elements that are rather quick and some, you know, but it's piecemeal, it's done a bit at a time. Like, the entire purpose of the trip, necessarily for the research, was simply to see what my network, how my network would perform. It worked fine. Next time will be to upgrade and improve the network up there. Now that I have a feel for what I have already from this trip, I'll take that information and plan to start planning for the next trip, which is in about a week or so.
It'll be on August 16th, that's the time it'll be rolling. And I'll be going up for another week and uh, doing some more work up there. And there's not going to be a lot of work, it's going to be enough. and 50 minutes into the 5th day of August uh, 2021. It is a Thursday and we're now starting our way home again. It's significantly warmer in Toronto here than it is uh, up where I was. Uh, the where I was, the reason why it's a good place for research is that uh, it provides a different segment of the weather that I see on satellite. Uh, up, uh, sort of comes together there. It splits apart here, either goes north or south of us. The stream that goes north starts to come together again uh, with the southern stream over where uh, the village of uh, Prophet Elias is, that's where the uh, trailer is. So I'm slowly fixing it up, slowly getting it uh, back into uh, a functioning order. But it's just a matter of time to uh, get that done because. About a week to get things done, but the order time in terms of ordering equipment, uh, I get equipment in every month and a half, so I'll be going back paying some bills now. When I go back to my office, my place, my second one, and uh, making the order for the next uh, month and a half, type of thing. That's kind of what's going to be going on. So that's why I said it's going to take me a while to fix it up. I will be going off grid. At some point in time. It'll probably take me a year to do the full installation. And about $600 uh, Canadian, including tax and shipping. Gonna wait for the traffic to go by. It's busy on both the left and the right. This uh, intersection is kind of hit and miss. Usually we've been pretty good in, get, in getting no traffic. Now we have a lot of traffic.
Uh, it looks like we have some space after here. We have it on the right. Yes, we do. Come on, buddy. Oh, too late. camera a bit and there we go that guy's brakes are off that's what the squeaking sound is it's the uh, uh, the rotor the uh, disc slightly out of alignment that's what happens here sometimes particularly after it rains We're talking about various different types of personalities, and uh, and of course here here comes uh, Lionel LeBron again in terms of our discussion. <laughs> Lionel LeBron isn't alone in his views. And the experiences they have, uh, the things that they research and talk about or are interested in. Likewise, are, are is equally sort of a popular choice. It's, it's, it's something you have in terms of a discussion. But the thing is, at the same time, everyone wants to be the expert. The problem is, the experts, the ones who really know, there's really not much to talk about because you actually know and so there's not much to say. And so it's the ones who actually don't know that much, they're the ones who come out with a large chunk of discussion. And you sit there and enjoy the fire. Oh, it's, 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 it's here as you get around the fire looking at all these different things. And having these discussions. And the thing is, you would think, and this is where I talk about conspiracy theorists, Conspiracy theorists are not alone, they're not isolated. They rather reflect a common condition within society over the need for, in terms of a group dynamic, for someone to have a leader, someone to have some degree of importance. No, I mean, no one in a group, because this is the way it works, wants to be the loser. And this is how it's kind of phrased. That there are people in the groups who are the losers, they're the weirdos, they're the freaks. And the thing is, the conspiracy theorists tend to sort of take this because they take views that are contrary to the popular view. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong, but at the same time, the conspiracy theorists, because it's not part of their job to do the research, doesn't know what they uh, what they need to know. They're really just sort of uh, sort of counteract the, 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 the popular view. But sometimes at the same time, you know, there is no way to counteract the popular view because, well, it's a popular view. 
And there are people who, regardless of what the truth is, will want to be with the popular crowd. So it's an issue of, well, you know, well, social status. You know, do you want to be the loser? <laughs> if you don't want to be a loser, then true or whatever, true or not true, uh, then you're going to be with the uh, popular crowd. So it's not going to be a matter of true or false or whatever. It's going to be a matter of what's popular. And you're not going to defeat someone because in, in that type of argument because they don't care. They don't have. A, they're not. They don't care that the view is right or wrong. They want to be part of the crowd. And of course, at certain, certain points of time, they'll come up with their own ideas that are, you know, are, are great and so on and so forth. And they'll present it so good. They want to be one of the leaders of the crowd. They want to be seen as a leader. Some of, the, some of the people today, some of the younger people today, is that they've grown up in an environment where nothing is right or wrong. And so, how do you explain to them? How do you explain to these people whether something is moral or, in, or immoral in an, in, a, in, a, in an environment not of immorality, but a, 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 a an environment of amorality without, without any form of morals? A person who is immoral knows what's right and what's wrong. A person who is amoral has no cap no capacity to understand what's right and what's wrong. The capacity simply isn't there. It's adjusting my mirror. And this is where we're ta this is this is what's happened is over a period of time. The capacity from generation to generation to know what's right and what's wrong has disappeared. And this is why you, you see that, that history has no importance to them. So it doesn't matter what's right or wrong. It doesn't matter what history says. Because if you're immoral, nothing really matters. History doesn't matter. This, this, is, this was the position of Tolstoy. He was the reflection of the postmodern, of the hedonistic uh, uh, socialist. This is what came out of Voltaire. Prior to the emergence prior to the emergence of the uh, postmodernist. The emergence didn't really occur until Basically, it's in 1945 when the atomic bomb went off, and what, what the atomic bomb did, because it was never predicted by science, this was done by an experimentalist. You ended up having a situation where uh, the so-called scientific truth uh, met its uh, sort of met its maker, and there was no longer a scientific truth. There was no longer a mathematical truth in terms of being absolute, and you devolved into a. a probabilistic, uh, indeterminate universe as opposed to determinate science. Everyone is taught. That's your, you know, your standard scientific theory. 